Ellison from Hudson Valley Bookkeeping, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to invoice your tenants. All right, let's get started. Okay, everyone, let's talk invoicing for landlords. There's a couple things you would need to do, and I'm just going to go over the basic concepts now, and you're going to look at a file I've already created. First thing I would suggest in your QuickBooks Online is switch to Accountant View. I'm in account view right now, you would just click your icon right here and click this and it says, it's just a much better navigation. Um, so I really hate this layout and I would recommend, see it says you're in business view and I purchased this as a, a like, I used to do these and I was inside my accountant portal and they were always accountant, but now it, then I purchased this separately. I'm paying the 80 some dollars a month for it. And now I always still would like to teach it in accountant view. It's a smarter way. It's much easier to navigate. And I would highly recommend doing that. So first step, I would go to account view. Okay, sales. The first thing you would need to do before, well, let me stop. The first thing ever, and I will set up my chart of accounts that I like to use. This one's not even numbered, but you would need to make income codes. That's really important for your invoicing piece because I believe that each building and then each sub in the units of the building need to be set up. I have some videos on chart of accounts, really should watch those, but you would just basically make a parent code. If you have a multifamily unit, if you only have a single family, then you only need one. Then you could just use rental income. But if you have any type of building with more than one unit, you need to be creating the building name and then the sub units. This is how you'll effectively create a really nice rent roll. Okay, so that's your foundation. So number one, make sure you create your income codes. The second step, you need to create your items. And that would be here under, look what I did. I clicked the gear. I've clicked product and services right here under lists. Okay. And now look what I did here. I, I'm just going to show you this one. This name is B1 unit three. And then if you click here, it's linked to my unit three building one. Okay. That's really important. You have to, you have to be linking the item because each rental price right? For that monthly rent could be different. Like in this scenario, I see unit four is 1800, unit one's 1800, but unit two is 2000. And these are things you can set up. The other thing is if you have a class, if you're using that um, online plus or advanced, you can use classes. You used to be able to do it with um, essentials. Now they took that away. So for this one, it's unit one, B1, if you have classes, create those too. Okay, these are just ways, I have a bit, lot of videos on why I believe in classes. So these items are really important that you create the item and you link it to the right chart of account, okay? So now you've done, you've created the chart of account, you've created your income codes are specific to your units. Now you've created your items and your items are linked to your income codes. Now what's next? You're going to create your, sometimes you can get this to say tenants. It's just like fixing or changing one special thing. It doesn't matter. Okay. Now, I like to make the building, the parent, and then as these go through and you create um, new tenants or subtenants of the building, this is a nice way to do it. If Once again, if you only have one building, we only have one unit, you don't need to go to all this work. But let's just look at this customer. Okay, so if we go into edit, you'll see that this is, because here's the thing, you could have Lori Bond, that's me and my maiden name back in the day. And right, so this is building two, unit 3A. You could have someone else coming on for when Lori's leaving. And so you're still going to need a building two unit three A, and it could be Tim Smith. So, and my, and Tim Smith's and lease date, that's why I put that right there. So you can always know when the lease is expiring, could be 1231 
25, right? So that's why I would still always create a new tenant. Don't make your tenant the unit number. Make them very specific because you can make these inactive once they're fully paid and closed out. Okay, is a sub-customer of building two. But notice I did not bill the parent customer. That'll screw everything up. So you have to get these done when you're setting it up, right? So let's say we have this Tim Smith. Hopefully I didn't already make a Tim. So building to unit 3A. Okay. Tim Smith. Where I come from, we don't have very exciting names. Okay. We're going to go up here. You're going to click new customer. Tim Smith. Okay, let me find it. It's a sub customer. That's when we pick build. I said building two. So building two. Customer display name. All right, do it like this. B2 unit 3A Tim Smith 12, 31, 25. Okay, look how it did this. Built a parent. See how that auto did that? Take that out. Okay. You could put any notes here. You could add your lease. Just know that this is not like HIPAA compliant. And if it gets somewhere, how hacked, but I don't think people, what you I worry about maybe is anything with social securities. Okay. So you say save. Right? So. You see here, well, I kind of did these a little different. I didn't write it out, but I have two unit three A's. But let's say Lori's moving out in a certain point and Tim's going to move in and he has to have his first month's rent now where he's got to pay his deposit. So I'm just not even going to pay attention to that one. We're going to create a new invoice. So again, you would have your security deposits. Building to unit 3A. I think I did 3750. Okay. I'm going to class it. Okay. So this could be put in as prepaid rent. And then you've got to reverse it. I'm just going to say your cash basis. He's going to pay it within your year. And it's fine. Okay. So you're you're sending him an invoice for the first month's rent and security deposit. I'm not going to worry about last month. And then let's see what this does. So this is on what's say eleven fourteen. Okay, so eleven fourteen. Some of these I had done ahead of time, but here's Tim Smith's, right? It's unit 3A, building two. So we had 1A, 2A, and 3A, and here's Tim's rent. Now, he didn't. if he doesn't pay this, this is run on accrual, then if I switch it to cash, Tim's amount doesn't show up. But as you can see, why I'm pushing you guys to really break out your in individual incomes each time is because of this. So you can really watch where there's holes in your rent. This is just a demo file, so there's lots of holes. But you can see, oh, wait, did, was this a move out time? Why did I have no rent in February? Um, these would be things lenders would look at. They really want to see your real rent roll. Um, okay, so here is Tim's income from that invoice we created. It's really only for December. I mean, true, if he was really moving in, you'd have to put it to a prepaid rent and then reverse it. But if your cash basis when Tim pays is all that matters. So definitely make sure you know if your cash are full. You would check with your CPA or check your tax return. It says it right on there. Okay. Here is Tim's security deposit. 
So what I like to do is always make sub accounts for each unit you own. You can make them as they happen, but again, you're going to go over to accounting, chart of accounts, and create your sub accounts that are a sub of security deposits payable and make them by unit. At one point, this is one I wouldn't necessarily do by person. You could have multiple people in that unit, like one you just collected, one you're about to pay out once they move out. You know, you have that timing issue, but that way, at least you, you're only going to have two things in that register at most. So again, you could go here, chart of accounts. This is only going to show your like balance sheet. So 3A. And you look, even if you had two, it's going to be so easy. And then one day when you pay him back, you're going to write an expense and reduce this liability. I will teach you one more thing. Let's say Tim pays. Okay. So we're going to go back over to Tim. He pays you. Let me say he gave you check. It's the only check you received. Save it close. So that's the basics of creating an invoice for a tenant and also receiving payments. All right, um, please post any comments or questions or video requests and I'll do my best to make them. All right, have a great day.